All right, London, how are you, brothers and sisters? Looking good, are you excited? Oh, I need more love than that. We are in the end times. Are you ready for this one? You ready for the last battle? All right, we're ready to make things happen. So, very special time in human history. Lots of emotions in the air. Change everywhere. We haven't had a break since 2020, haven't we? It's been rough going, and us Bitcoiners are still here. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud to be a part of this community. I've been looking around and I've been seeing that we're fighting on a lot of different fronts right now, but the only one that really counts is to take back the financial pillar of power. Once we have that, we will have the freedom to move. We will not have fear of anything, because the money will flow and we'll be okay. So I started something called CivKit, Civilization Toolkit. I'm a Bitcoin purist, some may call me a maximalist. Any maximalists here in the audience? Raise your hands. Maxis, toxic maxis especially, the most toxic available. The more toxic, the better. I like to tell people, you expect your infantry to be nice, these guys are holding the front lines. There's gonna be some toxicity, so God bless you. I consider myself a bit more of an optimalist. Bitcoin is our last best hope to resist centralization. It is the strongest thing that we have with the strongest community, and I'm proud to be a member. So I'm not gonna build anything into Bitcoin. I'm not gonna change Bitcoin at all. I like it the way it is. But you better believe I'm gonna build around Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin is something to be built around. Just like people built around the internet or on the internet, I'm building around Bitcoin. And that's what CivKit is. Bitcoin is peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. An amazing invention. And it seems to me to be the crown jewel in the peer-to-peer -peer revolution, right? We started with the internet. This is the first peer-to-peer -peer innovation. Then we got all these amazing devices like this one in my pocket right here, a little mini computer called a smartphone. There's billions of these around. And then we got peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash by Satoshi Nakamoto, an amazing invention. So before I talk about the next phase in the peer-to-peer -peer revolution, let me tell you a little bit about CivKit. It's a peer-to-peer -peer electronic marketplace. It's open source for life for life. There's no foundation, there's no company, it's just a GitHub repo and a white paper. And me, and all of those whose hearts are attached. The protocol does not earn a single Satoshi at all. And that's by design, to keep the protocol pure. And because of that, we have some amazing people coming to help us. Truly mission-driven people that want to change the world. And Uber geeks as well. We're self-funded, there's no VCs. We took not a money from any of these people, and that is also by design. One of the biggest banks in Japan said, hey, we'll give you 200 million if you have your own token. We said, no thanks, we already have a token. It's called Bitcoin. And that's the way it's gonna stay. Borderless, permissionless, and most importantly, unstoppable. I believe it's the most important Bitcoin project there is. So we're completing the work of Satoshi Nakamoto, right? We've all been waiting for Satoshi for a while and it kind of feels like that. Our mascot is this cute little Atiko Inu, very cute little Japanese dog. They're actually quite big. Anyone ever see the movie Hachiko with Richard Gere? It's based on a true life story of this dog that waited for his, his caretaker to come back 10 years until he died. And Hachiko waited there for him faithfully. That's why we chose Hachiko. There's no, it's not Dogecoin, don't worry. It's just Hachiko. The bestest this boy ever. So Satoshi's original vision, what was it? Was it just for us to have this wallet and replace the banks with this wallet and we'll have this store of value and that's it, we're done? No. The clues are in the code. The very first version of Bitcoin Core, anyone here ever messed with Bitcoin Core in the early days before we had BitGo? Yeah? Man, that thing leaks memory like a, anyway. The very first version of Bitcoin Core, it had marketplace functions in it. Functions for inventory, functions for escrow. 11 such opcodes which were removed 
because they were cluttering things up. And I'll tell you, as someone who has built a marketplace for the past 10 years in the Global South, building marketplaces is hard. It takes quite a bit of fine tuning. There's the immense threat of fraud. So much to do. He didn't have time to do it. I've actually done it all of it in a centralized, distributed manner. I built a peer to peer marketplace. We got 13 million users. We were bootstrapped, and the demand was immense. Ten years ago, actually, no, nine years ago, I, was, I went to Africa for the first time. I'm originally African. I was born in Egypt. My parents came to New York for the promise of a better life, right? Any other immigrants up in here? Any other immigrants? You know we work hard. We work real hard, right? My parents worked real hard because there was no opportunity where they're from. They went to America. And they did all right. But I went to Africa and I saw the tremendous demand that people had for Bitcoin and the problems that they had. I talked to the people on the street, the students, everyone. What are your problems with money? You wouldn't believe. And when I heard all that and I saw the energy that these people had, I said, wow, this is the place. We're putting our bets on black, brown, and yellow over here. These people are alive. They're ready to go. They're young. And these problems define them, but they won't let the problems define them. They want the solution to define them. That is beautiful. As an entrepreneur, I was sold. And I said, Africa is going to lead Bitcoin adoption. This was nine years ago. Everyone laughed in my face. I got Nigerian scammer prince jokes, starving Somalian kid jokes. Africans couldn't figure it out. They only make $2 a day. Now, Africa, Nigeria, leads all of Bitcoin adoption globally. That was the market I got closest to. So there's something here, folks. I'm not just a crazy guy with a hat. <laughs> Reality has proven us correct, and this is just the start. So someone's got to finish this work. I built a peer-to-peer -peer electronic marketplace. It was called Paxful. I have a new one now as well. Because that experiment didn't work out because it was centralized, and it was an American company. And God knows Uncle Sam don't love peer-to-peer. -peer. Let me tell you that right now. I saw the writing on the wall real early, and I got out of Dodge. And I refuse to put anyone in danger. But guess what? We need peer-to-peer -peer now more than ever. We're in the final round right now. It has officially begun. The urgency is on. But guess what? We've been losing for the past 400 years. By we, I mean humanity. We have been under assault by the most violent and aggressive entity that we couldn't possibly understand this thing. But it just won't let us go. And we've been beaten down since. All this new tech, great. What does it matter if our spirits and our sovereignty is taken away and beaten out of us inch by inch? And we're going through such a test right now where our humanity is literally on the line. So I'm taking this seriously. And I hope you are too. Because I don't play to lose. I play to win. It's not just because I'm American either. It's because I'm human. We're here to win this test, guys. So we spent 14 years trying to place banks with wallets. Has it gotten us to the level of success that we were hoping for? Anyone here buy one of those lattes with Bitcoin? Is that our measure of success? Who should we study? Are we really still trying to replace the banks, which never really worked anyway? Shouldn't we be trying to do something better? The Lightning ecosystem is doing great. Lightning apps popping up all over the place. It's beautiful. But Lightning isn't moving fast enough. Self-custody. How many people here in the audience actually self-custody? Raise your hands, be honest. All right. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Wow, really? Awesome. I'm impressed. I'll tell you from running a marketplace of 13 million users on the ground, less than 1% of the people are still using 2FA, let alone self-custody. So we got some work to do. And guess what? CBDCs are here. Right now in Nigeria, everyone in Nigeria gets an eNaira CBDC account by default in every single banking app. So it's already here. The Nigerians said no to CBDCs. They've been fighting it. But hey, it's just sitting there. And the same thing is going to happen in Europe, right? Christine Legarde. She's going to put one of those e-euro wallets in all of your accounts. So it's already here. And guess what? Shitcoins are still here. They're still here, folks. 
Islamic coin is now running all over Africa. It's a total scam. Try to warn people, but we still have to deal with all these scammers. And regulation is closing in on Bitcoin. By January 6th in this country, you're going to need to take a test to buy your first Bitcoin. A test. And if you fail it three times, you're permanently banned. You can only put 10% of your total wealth into Bitcoin or crypto, even if you do pass. And this is going to be the trend throughout the entire West. They don't want you having Bitcoin. They certainly don't want you self custody in Bitcoin. They certainly don't want you doing the things with your Bitcoin that matter most, that move the needle most. So we're still here after 14 years of FUD, but we got some serious work to do to win this fight, to win the actual fights. This is the last round. Any Street Fighter fans here? Final round. Here we are. So what's our strategy going to be? Who's in our corner? Well, first we have to recognize that the Western world is collapsing. And there's a lot of people here that have been saying, man, I told you it was going to go down. <laughs> and they're real happy about being proven right. But this is nothing to actually be happy about. There's going to be some dark times ahead. We'll come out the other side as winners. And the entire global south will rise up and the west as well. But this is what we're facing right now. We are firmly in World War III. If you haven't figured it out yet, I hate to break the news to you but we are officially in World War III. We'll deal with it. Hyperinflation is growing. It's going to grow even more. We see that right now every time we go to the store, the supermarket. The banks in the West are all going to disappear. All these small little regional banks, your credit unions, and we're going to have one big bank. That is the trend. They are not trying to hide it from us. Klaus Schwab is very happy to tell us there's going to be one big central bank and we'll be eating bugs. Okay, that's what they want to do. We see the path to that. CBDCs are a big part of that. And the whole West is spiraling down, and it seems that chaos is the prime objective. Infinite wars, no one knows what is what, up is down, down is de uh, up, left is right, right is left. No one knows what to believe. It's chaos, and it'll continue to grow. If you think it's bad now, it's going to get worse. And there'll be refugees, a lot of refugees. Maybe not physically displaced refugees, but we're all going to be looking for something to do for our livelihood, and Bitcoin is going to be the refuge. Bitcoin will be there always. That's our job, to make sure that it's there and welcoming people, because the refugees are coming. We need a lifeboat. So Bitcoin is that lifeboat. Bitcoin will become the leading store of value in the global south. I just was on a call last night at Twitter Spaces. Two brilliant brothers from Nigeria started telling me about what's going on over there. And I was like, yeah, give me the alpha, bro. What does Nigeria need right now? And one brother said, all the old people in Nigeria, anyone over the age of 40, Africa's so young, if you're over 40, you're old, I'm old. Eh, eh, don't feel bad. And all these old folks want to buy Bitcoin. They love Bitcoin, Nigerians. They want to buy the Bitcoin as a store of their value because the Naira is rapidly depreciating. 50% in the last two years. It was 800 Naira to $1 two months ago. Now it's over 1100 on the black market. Think about that growth, 27, 28.9% in two months, and it's only going to accelerate. And every time you listen to the news, you heard about the Sahleh region in Africa, Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso breaking away from the French. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm wearing this French beret here in solidarity with them. I got nothing against the French. You guys are OK. I love the frogs, too. We're all fighting the same virus here. But all these leaders in the global south, like it was the leader of Kenya, Ruto, that got right up, right while Macron was sitting there looking at him with this smirk and said, hey, we need a new global financial architecture. Where is it? He's looking over in crypto land, seeing a bunch of scammers and dudes with withers hats and a bunch of carnivores, and they're like, is this it? Not yet. Sad that we got some work to do, but they're looking for it and they're waiting for it. Because guess what? Those leaders won't do a damn thing to help their people while all their money is in France, Paris, London, and New York. Their money has to be somewhere else. Because a lot of them want to do the right thing, but they are trapped and they have a gun to their head. And we're going to work on fixing each one of those problems one at a time. So no matter what, 
no matter how bad things get, no matter how high inflation is, people still need to trade. And when the going gets tough, the trading opportunities grow in arbitrage potential. There is more opportunity to be made for those that keep a cool head, a grounded spirit, and keep their eyes on the prize. This is the era where not just billionaires will be created, trillionaires will be created. So keep your spirits up, don't crack under pressure, and keep listening. So peer-to-peer -peer is the way, guys. We stay whole started out with peer-to-peer -peer and it will end in peer-to-peer. -peer. Already now you see people, a lot of Palestinians, a lot of Arabs actually have contacted me and said, hey, Ray, can you help me unfreeze my Binance account? They just locked it and told me to talk to the Israeli police. I was like, no, sorry, I mean, me and CZ, we've had some drinks together, but I don't have that kind of pull. And really, CZ can't do anything either. He's a good guy, he doesn't want to you know, mess with any of this stuff, but it's compliance. And once they get that message, they're all going to follow suit. All these centralized exchanges, no matter who runs them, a CEO cannot overrule a compliance decision. That is the law. It all has to go peer-to-peer, -peer, completely decentralized. And what we really need for a true lifeboat is Hawala 2.0. Anyone here know what Hawala is? You've heard of Hawala? It's just the Arabic word, it means money transfer. It's just peer-to-peer -peer money. You guys ever go to, you know, it's like Western Union for the people. You go to Egypt and you want to send some money to Pakistan, you meet a guy in the corner, he's like, yeah, I got a brother that lives in Pakistan. You give me 100 pounds here, I'll give you 100 rupees over there to whoever you want. And then those two guys, because they have a trust relationship with each other, will settle up. Hawala came to be because there was a huge problem with agency in the Roman Empire at the time. And traders can't deal without agency. We call it third-party payments now. So these Muslims got together and said, hey, we have a trusted network. We've got this immutable ledger, the Last Testament, the Koran. Let's do this together. Let's build a peer-to-peer -to -peer network together. And it still exists. It's called Hawala. It's huge in India. Bitcoin will allow us to do Hawala 2.0. Bitcoin with a marketplace. That's what we're building. So we're searching, right? We're searching for those use cases. We're searching for traction. We're trying to figure out how to put this thing together. Over the course of eight years, I built a user base of 13 million people, completely bootstrapped, $10 billion in peer-to-peer -peer volume. We solved some big problems, like getting the first Bitcoin into Africa. That's hard, right? How do you get Bitcoins into Africa when it's so hard for Africans to send money out of the country to buy the Bitcoin from a European, an American, or someone in China? Any ideas? Whole companies are set up in places like Nigeria just to get money out of the country. I was trying to solve this problem too. Like, hey, I'm saying Africa is going to solve, you know, lead Bitcoin adoption. It really needs it, but golly, how do you get that Bitcoin into the country? You can't get money out. It was $10 million at the time for a minimum order of cacao beans. I also looked into animal skins. I didn't have $10 million at the time because I was actually homeless, so that wasn't going to happen. So I needed a hack. So I came up with a hack, thanks be to God. I showed Nigerian brothers and sisters how they could, instead of getting paid with Western Union, ask their relative living in California to buy a gift card from the gas station with cash, and then send them the back of that gift card code. They would then take that gift card code and sell it to someone in China, get Bitcoin, they might lose 50%, actually. And people are asking me, why would someone give up 50% of the value of a gift card? You know why? Because right now, if you send $100 from Western Union, from California to Nigeria, yeah, Western Union will charge you 10 bucks. And everyone says, oh, that's too high, man. The 10 bucks is nothing. The problem is, when the money goes from into Nigeria, it gets taxed by the government through the exchange rate, and they lose 50%. Your hundred bucks becomes fifty dollars because the bank gives you the money at the official price, which is four hundred naira, and the black market price, the street price, is nine hundred. So you're already losing over fifty percent. So they were happy to give a gift card for fifty percent off and be able to get Bitcoin instantly, and they could turn around and sell it to the guy next door for a cash transfer from their, their bank to his bank. So what you've effectively done with a peer-to-peer marketplace is you created a universal translator and transporter of money. A gift card bought with US dollars in California becomes a Nigerian bank transfer in Naira with two peer-to-peer -peer trades. 
Anything can become anything else. And this basically gives us infinite opportunities for arbitrage. This is the hot new industry. People just don't realize it. Even within Bitcoin, even within crypto, everyone's so focused on making their own token, they're ignoring this tremendous opportunity for arbitrage and profit. Every week I get pictures from all over the world. One guy just sent me a picture of him and his new Lexus. He started out unemployed, then he hired his entire graduating class, all of his friends to actually work in his peer-to-peer -peer business, which he built on this marketplace. I'm so proud every time I see them. Brings a tear to my eyes. But building marketplaces is hard. There's a lot of challenges, especially when it comes to fraud, especially in the global south. People tell me, you built a safe business in Nigeria, India, and China. These are the fraud capitals of the world. I'm like, yes, we did. But those people are overwhelmingly honest. It's just that the banks don't want to deal with them. So I've been learning a thing or two over the past 10 years, and we know how to mitigate fraud without ruining the party. Anyone here ever get their bank card shut down while you're traveling? Anyone ever happened to anyone here? It happened to me three times last week. Real pain in the ass. These guys, their fraud detection algorithms suck, they don't work. Ours works, we're doing better. And we have to scale to every single use case, right? This peer-to-peer -peer marketplace has to solve every problem, not just making people money through profit, but it has to solve remittance, payments issues, everything. And the focus has to be on the global south. By the global south, I mean Africa, Southeast Asia, Latin America, India, places where people are young, where people are ambitious, where things are open instead of closed. I'm putting my bets on black, brown, and yellow, and I've been proven right and richly rewarded, and as long as we continue to do that, we will win. Anyone here want to come with Nigeria to me? Ghana, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Cameroon, Rwanda, Uganda, South Africa, Cape Town's beautiful. I promise you, if you come with me to Africa in November, you're going to see an energy unlike anything you've ever seen, and you're going to be part of history. It will be documented, expect the Netflix. Yes, I will be wearing this hat the entire time. We also need a massive educational effort. That's a big job. And we don't get rewarded for the education, right? Anyone here make educational content about Bitcoin? You guys rich yet from that? No? Well, I promise you I'm working on that too. Because you guys, if anyone deserves to be rich, it's you guys. But the world demands more, right? We're not moving fast enough. So we're searching. We have this lifeboat, but what we really need to do is build Noah's Ark. Is there going to be that many refugees? Civilization needs a total reboot. CivKit is Civilization 2.0. We are delivering the kernel of Civilization in code. I don't care about ordinals, NFTs, deeds, or voting. Anyone here care about voting anymore? Does that even work? When is the last time that worked? You care about voting? Get yeah, now. All right. He's cool. Some people still believe in democracy. I don't. I don't believe in DAOs either. They're not really solving a problem. What we need is a decentralized, autonomous civilization right now. 99% of governance is about money, right? No one cares who gets in, it's all about the money. Shadowy super bankers, figure that out first. Who cares who makes the laws as long as I have control of the volume of money in circulation? And there are certain things that are needed to build this arc, certain things that are very, very hard that no one wants to do. Because there's a lot of great marketplace protocols out there right now that work pretty damn well. LND markets, etc. Great stuff. The problem is they're missing a few things. And you only know what they're missing when you've tried to build and scale a marketplace. Number one, there needs to be reputation, right? I'm saying this just as Jameson Loop is getting off stage. I think it's the first time I've seen that dude without his baseball cap and sunglasses. If he heard me say that we need reputation, he'd probably slap me. But guess what we do? It's a critical part of transaction and commerce. And the people in the Global South are tired of being invisible. They want to be visible. They want their global financial passport. And they're ready for it, so we're going to give it to them. Reputation, web of stakes, is going to be built into CIFKIT. There will be a web of trust, and you'll be able to judge the web of trust score without it revealing the graph of who you've traded with. So privacy is built into it from the start. We also need a stable form of e-cash, right? I love Bitcoin, but let's face it, USDT on Tron is kicking our butts right now. How does it feel 14 years later and most of the volume 
on crypto is on Tron. We're going to fix that. And guess what? The last thing we need is a decentralized court system. That's hard, guys. But whenever there's a dispute in a financial transaction and it happens, there needs to be someone to mediate. There must be recourse. We need a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer court system. Super important, super hard, actually harder than Bitcoin. I've been building it in a distributed, centralized manner for the past eight years. Now it's going to be on CIFKIT. Huge, huge part of the, progress, of the project. And you can see, this is why it's CIFKIT. It's a civilization toolkit, not just a marketplace toolkit. We're going to have judges, everything you need, and nothing more. And of course, it's all built on Bitcoin. So if we get this right, how does the world look like? Where are we going to? The whole world is rising up right now. As the West spirals down, the global South is rising out. And it's not us versus them. All of humanity will benefit. We're going to see an explosion in commerce. Whenever you have truly free trade in a truly free market, the result is always wealth. That's why it's all about getting those caravans from one place to the other, because it makes everyone rich. We've known this since we were riding horses and mules. It works. Free trade works. It makes wealth. And there's trillions and trillions of dollars of wealth out there waiting to be unlocked. We're going to put people to work. 50% of the global South is young and unemployed. Imagine what happens when you put all those hands to work. That's what this will do. And I've seen the proof firsthand. BRICS is trying to do it on a nation state level. Hey, you will use our currency, you use ours and skip the dollar, man. It's all good. Great. BRICS is not going to save us. We must save ourselves. What BRICS is doing on a nation state level, we must do on the ground. Corridors must be built in the global south by the people of the global south. And the big enchilada here, the big prize is price discovery. Anyone know what I mean by that? Price discovery? The biggest tool that these central bankers have, besides this broken transmission network, is that they determine the price of everything. They keep the price of gold and silver artificially suppressed. They can do so with a bunch of fake paper shorts every morning on the Forex. They can say to the president of Egypt or Nigeria, hey, you're not listening to us. So guess what? You're going to be a hell of a lot poorer tomorrow, your whole country. But your currency is going to take a dive, and it's been happening. We take that power away from them, and we've officially won. When the price of everything, whether it's gold, silver, Bitcoin, Bolivars to the dollar, Naira to the dollar, whatever, when the price of everything is set algorithmically by trusted peer-to-peer -peer trades, and humanity has an alternative index for this that is respected, we have won. It is not their game anymore. Price discovery rests solely in the hands of the people. This is the prize for you true geopolitical Strategists out there, this is important. I wish I was smarter and I could explain it better, but my heart's telling me it's really important. So I'm going right for it, because I know it's going to piss them off, and I love pissing these guys off. Even if it means being public enemy number one, the reward is a new world. We will have cities like Dubai popping up all over the global south. Runaway prosperity can happen very fast, ladies and gentlemen. In less than a decade, in less than half a decade, you can go from zero to hero, and history has proven it, especially with three billion young people in the world ready to go to work for us, and us, I mean humans. When whole nation states can get on a Bitcoin standard like that, as easy as setting up a WordPress blog, we got something. We're gonna see El Salvador's popping up all over the place. I intend to be visiting some this November. And self-custody will be common. We're going to make it simple. We're going to make it work. People are going to love self-custody. It's going to be the new thing. And then the people take control of the narrative. And the armies shrink. Hopefully go away completely. That's my dream. Thank you all so much. Did I go over time?